Hi, welcome to The Stitch TV Show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilting talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. Join us for twice monthly talk shows, virtual stitching, celebrity interviews, book clubs, and podcasts. Learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Our show today is brought to you by QT Fabrics and Mermaid Merriment fabric line, which is very exciting. <laughs> Mary Inglebright. Mary, uh, yes, I love Mary Inglebright. She's one of my favorite artists. These, uh, the mermaids on this fabric are cute. Uh, they are the A and the YMCA. They're all doing this. <laughs> uh, which I suppose is a streamlined way of swimming. I don't know that I've ever seen a mermaid represented swimming that way. So kudos. Also, this fish is really giant compared to the mermaid in scale. <laughs> Well, it could be a big fish. Fish are friends. Fish are friends, not, not food. food. <laughs> what are we, what are we going to be talking about today, Lynn? <laughs> we are going to be talking about weighted quilts and gimmicky quilt designs, which I hope you explain to me. Um, <laughs> we're joined by our latest pattern. We're going to need a bigger bolt. And you can get the pattern at shop.thestitchtvshow.com. So. Yes. <gasps> I said two words. Book club. What's book that club. About? Well, we thought we would get together and talk about quilt books <laughs> and books and just quilts. Books. 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 <laughs> so our first um, book episode club. book club is going. Is it monthly? It is monthly. It's the last Friday of the month. So okay. typically when the second episode of the month drops, the talk show episode, okay. which is April 27th given that we are in April 2018 right now. And our first book club topic will be Jelly Roll Quilt Books. Jelly Rolls. So, or those are called other things by other. Oh, that's true. Two and a half inch strip quilts. There you go. TM. So uh, we're still figuring out the format. We're going to do we it as know. we Let's... have the virtual <laughs> stitch-ins. Uh, so if you have a Jelly Roll or two and a half inch strip quilt book, that you like, feel free to email that to us at info at the stitch TV show dot com. Oh, yes. Uh, or you can join us live on the chat on YouTube. It'll be 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern, April 27th, the first one. Uh, and then, you know, we're, we're going to see talk. how it works. We're going to yeah, see. Yeah, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to do it live in person together instead of relying on my janky internet at home. She <laughs> does have janky internet. I tried. I know. So we're going to film it here in this whole studio setup thingy. Well, we should use it more than once. Yeah, we should. <laughs> It'd be better. We're going to swap it out for, like, night mode. <laughs> night mode. Ooh. wonder if we could, we could get, like, a disco light or something. I have some club. Christmas tree ornaments. There you go. That are disco. And they hook up hey, to the little speaker. Hey, didn't you have, like, the speaker system with the little disco round thing that would no. shoot? No, but several Ooh, of the production had that. stuff do. Oh, I knew somebody did. It like was at some retreat somewhere. That might give me a migraine, though. So I'm gonna. You're gonna say gonna no. Put the no on that. Okay, I can understand that. No yeah. migraines. No migraines. When we talk about book club, no migraines. Yeah. Well, no migraines. Ever. Ever. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, so unrelated to this, I was at a bar <laughs> <laughs> in New York City. New York City. <laughs> uh. Yeah, and there was a, a very windy dance floor. Bar. This is our whole and new like episode. laser lights and fog machines, and it was very like eighth grade dance with at a bar at a bar in New York City. In New York City, where they're supposed to be trendy and cool. And, and yes. I was very afraid that it was going to trigger a migraine between the weird smoke <clears throat> from the smoke machine and the fog machine and the laser lights and the yeah, but it didn't. Hooray! Yay! Yes, and I didn't get mugged on the way back to the hotel. You were in New York City, I so was. there is a, you know, option. Well, it was like, oh, 40-minute Uber ride to go 10 blocks or just hoof it. So I hoofed it. 10 blocks? That's long. City blocks are long. Yeah, fine. That's right, because you do the treadmill thing. Those boots were made for walking. <laughs> so It's still cold up there. Mm, no. It was Literally, the forecast caption in the taxi cab said, surprisingly summery. That was legit the caption for Friday and Saturday. <laughs> it's like 60 degrees. Didn't oh, wow. even get super sweaty walking around. So it was nice. There you go. That's cool. Yeah. So anyway, book club. Book club. We're doing book club. Yay. Ooh. 
All right, so so there you go. Now we're talking about therapy blankets, therapy blankets, or therapy quilts, or therapy things that are sort of like quilts. <laughs> have you ever made a weighted blanket? I have not made a weighted blanket. I have done other similar things, but we haven't. So. And this is very different from my husband's idea, which is I just want to have four quilts on me because I like the feeling of being pressed down in bed, which we are not going to dive into. <laughs> <laughs> that totally should not have come out of my mouth right now. Yeah. But he, he thinks back to like sleeping at his grandmother's house where she just had like all of the cotton quilts on. <laughs> I'm like, eh, dude, whatever. Go on with your bad self. Okay. <laughs> so not that, but this is like filled with Plastic pellets. They Pro are. tip, don't use rice, because if you need to wash it, that's going to get funky. <laughs> that's true. Yes. Yes, they are made with plastic pellets, and you so I've not made one, but I I looked into making one, because a friend of mine has, uh, her child is, has some sensory issues. Mm -hmm. And it helps calm them down to have a weighted blanket. And so she wanted me to make one for her. And honestly, by the time I bought all the material, mm -hmm. what they were selling them for online was less expensive yeah. than me doing it for her and getting paid to do and it. A lot of that's the cost of the pellets, I think. Because, I mean, fabric is fabric, but the pellets can be, depending on where you get them from. Because you can only get, like, small bags at big box stores oh you can no you can but even if i bought like i've i saw i'm kind of in bulk yeah even if i could do that the cost of my time to make and all that kind of stuff for what they could buy one for was less expensive yeah. online but you know that may not be true everywhere oh that's true also um plus you may have a need to make them for multiple people and then the cost would go down yeah kind of thing so i have also looked into it yeah and i think you do kind of right sides together envelope style turn it right side out leave once one edge completely open and sew the channels in and then fill it okay, okay. yes yeah yes and but you fill it and then sew a line and then fill oh, and yeah. sew a line and fill and sew a line so that the weight is distributed throughout the blanket and the thing is also with weighted blankets is it needs to be the right weighted mm. for the child. Yeah, if it's <laughs> so, too much, that has the opposite effect. Of exactly. What um, so, and I, there's a percentage online where you determine how much weight you use according to the how much the child weighs or how heavy the child yeah. is. We'll put a link so, to that in the yeah. show notes. But it's also something that you can do for... Um, dogs who have anxiety oh like the thunder shirts yeah exactly so you can <laughs> Didn't we talk about that and someone commented they wanted to see me put a thunder shirt on my cat <laughs> that would be kind I of i would funny. just put a cat on another cat and there you go <laughs> <laughs> that would not go well i got a cat I... that's like a bag of jello so <laughs> perfect you <laughs> sit on this other one good <laughs> and we're done i've not had a dog that suffered through anxiety, so I've not looked into that. Um, so I don't think Fred's particularly. Fred gets anxious during thunderstorms. And I, he definitely wants to be under something and next to us, but he's okay with a regular quilt. Right, that's enough. We have claimed of perhaps he's a little that he is a quilt terrier <laughs> because he just loves to be inside of them and under them and snuggled up under them. Yeah, like he's wearing a babushka. <laughs> Josie doesn't get under them. Doc didn't care. Josie doesn't get under them, but she lays on, like they're her. She claims them. Yes. Like, I am laying on this one. What irritates me is she tries to dig at them, and then yes. I get, I'm like, don't dig at the quilts. Fred does that, but oh. usually you can just lift it up. Because, you know, he doesn't have thumbs, bless his heart. So he can't figure out how to get it himself. No, she just wants to move it around mm -hmm. into whatever nest she thinks she needs drives me nuts and they don't like pillows on the couch they put all the pillows off the couch that drives me nuts too why do i have dog skin i don't know <laughs> i don't know no i adore them that's why have you ever made um other types of therapy blankets like the fidget 
I haven't. Um, there was a group in our quilt guild mm-hmm. that does make them, and I they meet at a time where I couldn't go meet with them to make it or whatever when they scheduled the time. But here's what I did find out. When you're doing those fidget quilts that you should use, and I brought some props. <laughs> props. That you should consider, like, having different types, maybe put a zipper on there that they can move back and forth. Um, buttons where they would unbutton it or button mm-hmm. it back. Also, different texture of material. Like, this isn't necessarily cotton. This came from a, um interior designer's, like, sample book where you could pick out different fabric for your um, yeah. curtains or... or you could do burlap, too. Right. So, different kinds of texture of the fabric. And I think this would work for kids as well as adults. They were doing it, the group that was doing it through our guild was doing it for um, assisted living mm-hmm. for type of. Alzheimer's. And, right. Yeah. But the other thing they did suggest is if you knew someone who you needed to make a fidget blanket for, and they're just, they're what, 18 inches by 18 inches. They're not yeah. big. They're they small. Smaller than a fat quarter. Yeah. Um. But the other thing they suggested is if you know what their occupation was, put things on there that they could relate to that maybe had to do with that occupation. So, I mean, if they were a, a homemaker or, a, you know, cooked a lot, you could put a wooden spoon on there. If they, you know, had keys as a part of their job. You know those wooden spoons with the holes in the top? You yes. can like a measuring the, spoon or a... Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no. There are wooden spoons and they have holes in them to, I will have to show you, apparently, in the exactly. picture. Well, so I'm wondering, because you could put, you know, to give them the feel of that Right, but I go through, or, like, oh, well, you just use, a, like, an eight inch, eight, oh, you could eight do that inch too. drill bit hole, and then you could use floss or something and, and tie it to the quilt that way. Yeah. I was more thinking of, like, how you attach that? Right. But you could, well, you could attach it through the hole. But, yeah, you're right. You could do you that. Could, that might, yeah. Um, the <laughs> other thing that I've seen, like if keys are important to them, put keys mm-hmm. on there or just things that they can, that they've handled throughout their life that would attach meaning and mm-hmm. it's to their occupation kind of thing. So think about those kinds of things. But we're saying for children especially under three babies totally different new, new. Yeah, yeah totally different stick to the like therapy ligaments. blankets <laughs> that i was talking about were for alzheimer's mm-hmm. or um assisted living kind of yeah dementia type of patients so i, I sure. just found out this week i was very sad i found out last weekend that a lady who i'd taken some drawing classes with is now um had to go into assisted living and and yeah, she needs that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. They were talking about that at a meeting the other day. It made me sad. Yeah. Because I got to take a drawing class from her, and she was an amazing artist. Don't I would with do that. This. It's making noise. But I... But <laughs> don't. <laughs> so for babies. <laughs> Who we know don't care. We took a poll. We took a poll. They ball. do not care. You did take a poll. I did. It's on our Facebook group. What's up, Stitches? <laughs> uh, I voted. But for those, there was a like a commercial brand called Taggies, but it was double-sided fleece, and it had different ribbon loops sewn into the edge. And I had those for my kids. Right. And, and oh, they put teething rings on there and uh, stuff? Not, no, this was just ribbons. Oh, it wasn't super them. crazy. Yeah, I've seen that now, too. But the, you have to be careful. You don't want anything that can come off and be a choking hazard. But with babies, because, you know, they're uh, bad at seeing... When they come out of the chute, like they can really only see as far as like, you know, yay far. And they're not good at color at first either. So a lot of those tend to have very stark value contrast Black and, white. Um, and they get the texture thing. So you get ribbons with like different things printed on them yeah. or just different colors. Right. And that's another alternative too. If you don't want to commit to a full quilt because you'd like this baby's not going to care. There you go. And you can use that leftover minky. True. You know, because I have pieces. Minky comes in what sixty inch, I'm like fifty eight, sixty. Yeah, yeah, sixty inch width and or it stretches. <laughs> it does. And so I always have these weird 
Yeah. Like pieces of minky. Then I'm like, what am I going to do with this? Because piecing minky you can do, but it's not. <laughs> I know. Face. Inevitably, I ended up piecing one where the grain goes in a different <clears throat> direction, and then it just bothers me. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So. Mm-hmm. 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 So plastic pellets, definitely not rice. <laughs> or walnut shells. Ooh. That would be pokey. Yeah, I'm thinking no. Yeah. Just for hypoallergenic type stuff, no. Plastic pellets. Um, and then body weight. So don't make a 20-pound <laughs> weighted blanket for a 20-pound kid. 20-pound kid. That doesn't work. No. You're not going to be that pumped. <laughs> okay. I, that's all I know about therapy blankets they're very i know that there are a lot of organizations and charities that want our community to make them um so that they're available so i'm sure in your local area you could find Mm -hmm. if you're interested in doing this a group that would do it with you so you're not alone in your never mind one of my favorite things about the show is when (laughs) lynn says that's all i know about that and then she keeps talking (laughs) Lynn keeps talking all the time. I don't know why this surprised you. <laughs> now we're going to get a closer look at this quilt that's behind us. We're going to need a bigger bolt, and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. And now we are going to talk about um, something that Pam put on the list. (laughs) Gimmicky designs and taking a theme and elevating it. So, So, I have the big question mark like, I don't know what she's talking about. What? Okay, so I feel like I'm going to be quizzed. No, you're not going to be quizzed. I'm going to explain. Okay, I'll find something to quiz you about later. Let me just sit back. I'm going to be Pam. I'm just going to sit back and drink my water. Okay, so this came about as I, and I think you and I have talked about this, where you were like, I'm going to make a quilt with this theme, and and then you go immediately to the -the on-the-nose obvious thing, like, I'm going to make a shark quilt. (laughs) And you're like, do I want to put actual sharks on it? That feels weird. Who wants to buy a shark quilt? That's like a target market of two people. (laughs) Like, but if I made it There's a lot of people who watch Shark Week. I'm just saying. That's probably a bigger target market than you realize. Might be. Well, these are our people. They should buy this pattern. (laughs) There you go. Uh, So it it started from that because I knew, like, ooh, fun nautical fabric line. Also sharks. Also (laughs) sharks. So I went from, all right, Jaws poster. Cool. Should I put teeth in that? No, that feels on the nose, and also that's fiddly piecing. And so, <laughs> and See, I would have put teeth. And can you take that and make it so in a different layout or with different fabric, it didn't actually look like a shark quilt? Right. So that's what I'm talking about. When you take a theme and how do you make it so it's not quite so on the nose, it calls back to that idea. Right. But a person that doesn't like sharks, doesn't care about sharks, could also. I think you do this in a lot of your quilts. Yes. I think this is why I wanted to talk about it. I was like, yay, me. Let's talk about me. Let's talk about Pam that you beat. It's not that kind of show. (laughs) (laughs) So, for example, (laughs) a mermaid quilt. A mermaid quilt. And I say this because we have. Mermaid fabric. Mermaid merriment right in front of us. So I, I wrote a pattern that uses this fabric. Yes. But I didn't make a mermaid in the quilt because the panel was mermaid. Right. So, so that so, is one way to make a mermaid quilt. Like right. find the fabric or panel right. that has mermaid stuff And I was on asked it. to by QT, so that's why that came about. But I didn't... I, I I jumped off from the fabric right. and not from an idea, which is what you're talking about. Oh, let's make a shark quilt. Yeah. Here's we an idea. We could have found shark fabric. We could have found shark. That's 
I don't know that I've seen shark fabric. You could just get 15 shades of red. <laughs> <laughs> no, because sharks like blood. But I will say the original, we're going to need a bigger bolt, looked nothing like this. It was all no, it like didn't. super pointy, yeah. half, tri half rectangle triangle blocks. That look but like I shark like teeth. that you gave a nod to Sharknado. I did, yeah. I like the tornado blocks. I the tornado blocks and then the sharks and a Sharknado, which is, if you don't know, it's a cult classic film series. The final one comes out this year. Are you serious? Yeah, Are they time travel. Is it, how many have they I done? think this is the fifth one. Five? That's yeah. what I was thinking. There are not eight of them. Yeah, the production staff is going to look that You're up because they're concerned that <laughs> we're wrong. <laughs> Again. Um, so, <clears throat> but, so yes, that is one way to make a mermaid quilt. Now, what I was talking about is I would think, oh, well, what other elements of mermaids are there? Okay. Because what if you don't want a little on the nose? And then this well, fabric's right. only available for a certain amount of time. Right, exactly. So you could take a clamshell quilt and turn it so the scallops do this instead of point up, and it looks like mermaid scales. And you could do... It looks like fish scales. Oh, fish okay. scales. So, and yeah, bright mermaid colors and... Right. And go at it from that way. And that's a big deal right now. That six. There are six Sharknado movies. The sixth one comes out this summer. It's always the weekend during before school starts. I thought it was during Shark Week. No, it's always like the night before school starts. I don't watch and I Shark Week. I don't let week. my kids. Go. Just FYI. I it's don't on watch. a different channel. I don't watch it because it's, on a different it's channel. scary and you could die. Then stop talking about it. I'm just saying. For crying out loud. You were talking about fish scales and sharks and I'm just. Yes. I'm trying okay. to have a legitimate discussion about a design process <laughs> and you were off the rails. <laughs> okay. Are you done? Yes. I'm okay. done. So we could do a clam <laughs> shell and make the fish, fish tail. Yes. Which is a big deal because uh, you see patterns right now with. You know, snuggle, get into your fishtail, which I think are a little strange. But. It's a little strange. Also, I have heard of small dogs being trapped in those and getting overheated. So, fair warning for those types of blankets. If you have small animals that freak out easily in enclosed spaces, please be responsible. <laughs> that's It's like that's the a PSA good tip. episode. That's a good tip. We've yeah. got a lot of good tips today. Do we? Yes, <laughs> we do. No rice. <laughs> Don't let your dog get trapped in a fishtail. These are all very useful things. So how else could you make a mermaid quilt without mermaid print fabric? Well, okay, because I like applique, I'm not going to piece stuff like you do. So I'm going to probably draw something out and put in mm -hmm. an applique thing. So I probably take stuff a little more literal than you do. I don't, because I, I think, I look at this and I think, she did the same thing with our uh, design called Islands in the Stream, where you, you know, came you really up, love Kenny Rogers. She really loves Dolly Kenny Rogers. Uh, yes. <laughs> and we've sung that song on road trips multiple times. Very loudly. Exactly. Um, and, you know, she had this very graphic stream, blue, running through, I quilted it for her. So it was this very graphic blue running through it with these, you know, islands. And I got it after you saw the name. Like, I totally get this when I see the name. But I have to admit, you're really good at taking an idea and extrapolating it to a graphic level. And I think that that's really what you're talking about with the design process. Yes. Is you're, you're exchanging this concept or idea and you're you're translating it to a graphic level that can be easily pieced i think some of that too comes from i am not an artist from the sort of person that can like you do where you like actually sketch a thing like i, can, I try and sketch it and my mermaid's got like a janky eye <laughs> and her hair looks weird on one side it's like half beyonce half oscar the grouch she's better like, artist okay. than she's giving herself credit for. well from a a uh, sketching thing. Like, I have a very <clears throat> distinct look, which is circa uh, seventh grade. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. It's not good. But I think that that's a great design process. What you're doing is let's take, a, you know, a ship and how do we make that ship into a 
graphic element that will represent that. And I think that's very modern in um, the aesthetic, simply because if you look at Jackie Gearing and some of those other Elizabeth, not Elizabeth Hartman so much, but um, probably a Bill and Weeks Ringle. Mm-hmm. They they very much are Weeks Ringle and Bill Kerr. Let me say it right. They really very much look at simplifying a graphic design to uh, individual elements mm-hmm. that represent whatever kind of thing. And I think you do that well. I don't think I do it well, but I think you do it really well. Because I'm thinking Islands in the Don't Stream me. and this one. And then there was another one, and it's a pattern we've got coming out in a magazine, which you're going to tell me what it is because I don't remember. But Awkward Hug is the same way. It is. Yeah. We'll have that hanging hopefully next couple episodes. We'll get it back from the magazine. Right. What magazine is it in? Modern Quilts Unlimited, issue 23. <gasps> yes. On stand shortly. Oh, it's not as out As of yet. the time of filming. Oh, good. Well, I think it's out. Someone said they saw it. I haven't seen it. They usually send us it. They will. Okay. So, that's so I think it's not, because I keep checking their website. Is it out? Is it out? Is it out? Is it out? Yeah. It's not out. It's not out. <laughs> Maybe out tomorrow. We'll find Maybe. out. Maybe. So, but I think that that's definitely a great design process in how do I make a unicorn quilt and what am I going to extrapolate from the unicorn that would you know, translate into graphic elements. Is it the horn? Is it the mane? Is it the nose? You know. I always go, I think with unicorn, you got to go with like, what's the one thing that really signifies a unicorn? It's a horn. Yeah. You know that um, (laughs) there's a theory that unicorns were really rhinoceroses. Okay. Just saying. That with some fabulous wigs. Because <laughs> that's the other thing. It's like the long flowing mane. Yeah, that's what I said, the mane. I was very good at drawing unicorns when I was in seventh grade <laughs> BT dubs. And we're back to the seventh grade drawing. And that's why I like so, my pony. So <laughs> how would you do a mane? Like curved piecing? Yeah, I think I would do improv curved piecing. Oh, good. That where would you, work. You kind of layer your two pieces of fabric like so. And then you take your rotary cutter and just kind of. Have fun. Gently, free Gently, because if you do this, Ugh, it's not good. you'll be not You need happy. very shallow curves. Nothing more curved than a car window. I, that is a great visual. Not a Volvo. No, that's got corners. Like a legit car with, you know, curves. Nothing more curved than that. Because otherwise, you that's, that's be all why puckery. she's an engineer, right there. There's your reasoning. There's <laughs> many reasons. It's the giant spreadsheet like, inside my head is the main oh, one. Oh, Lord yes. have mercy. But yeah, I would. made me cry this week. I would start improv curve piecing a main. To do a main. Yeah. Or. Which is also how you could create pieced bacon. <laughs> Let's be honest. Which is really where I want to go next. But. I've I've had the wakey wakey eggs and bakey pattern in my head for a long time. It's never come to fruition. I just got to figure out how to write up instructions for that kind of yeah kind of curve without like being able to do this. <laughs> Probably not going to translate well. So I'm gonna work on that. We could make a video of you going and you do this and pretty much just, that's it. Instagrams, Instagrams. People are like what are she talking about? So, do you think that there are other designers out there that are doing this? I don't know. <clears throat> and I think what it comes down to is the taking a point of inspiration. Because I think some quilt designers work in block and unit constructs. I think, like, Charlotte and Gotti is one where she, she starts by, like, let's piece a lot of units and then let's put them together and see how cool they look. Okay, which is I one think, way starting. I think Bonnie Hunter tends to be that way a little bit. Oh yeah, when you think about on Ringo Lake, and mm-hmm. then she goes from a color scheme and translates that into right. piecing. So, and I think that that's a one approach where, um, 
But and I, and I think we've been doing this for hundreds of years. And the one that's coming to my mind is Burgoyne Surrounded. I mean, if you look at some of the names of blocks, traditional old blocks like the Bowtie Block and Burgoyne Surrounded and Monkey Ranch or Churn Dash, I mean, you're looking at blocks that have Burgoyne Surrounded was a nod to a Revolutionary War battle so they created that block to represent that battle hmm. and burgoyne was the general or the lead officer i don't know if he was a general but he was the officer that was surrounded so the block itself has a center kind of square and then there are various squares that surround that block um and so to me that we've been doing that as quilters log for cabins. a long log cabins exact same thing We've been doing that as quilters for years. So I don't think that this is um, a new thing, but I just don't think that we talk about it that way anymore. Yeah, I would agree. Well, I think we struggle too. There's not <coughs> a lot of original quilt blocks unless they well, are pieced together like Elizabeth Hartman to represent, like, here is an otter, here yeah, is an octopus. Which are super cute. They are super cute. Love the otter. I think I want to get that pattern with the otter in it. I love an otter. My favorite characters in um, Brian Jacques' books, which is some of my favorite books. You have otter food. I do have otter food. And there is a restaurant in Atlanta called Otter Chicken. So everybody can go get otter chicken at otter, or otter food at Otter Chicken. Is that that weird one that we pass on the way? <laughs> from the it's next to Whole Foods, down there next to New Whole Foods. It's a wings place. I that, think the guy who owns it. I think I'm daughter. thinking of like the wing hibachi place. That no, we thought was no, weird. no, no. That like, was why weird. are these two that things was... put together? Wing hibachi is weird. No, no, no. This is like a <laughs> wing bar place. And I think Wingdings. the guy who's owned it is named Otter. And I just think it's funny because there's otter food. You can go get otter food. Now I'm hungry. Let's get you this You were hungry done. before. I know. There's stomachs grumbling all up in this place right now. <laughs> That's one, true. Two, three, four. Yeah. <laughs> no one ate breakfast. <laughs> so, I think we've been doing that us. for go us. I think we've been doing this stuff for a long time. We just haven't talked about it. And I think if what you're doing is allowing us to explore that area again, um, in creating new blocks, giving reason why we create those blocks, design elements, I think it's great. I just feel like maybe my stories aren't as noble as like a civil war battle like hey man sharknados <laughs> but no i'm not gonna say that no i totally disagree with you because not every quilt block has to do with you know and it was revolutionary war oh sorry um, <laughs> bad um, history <laughs> but i don't think that every quilt block does that i mean we change stuff according to our geographical region and who we are. I mean, the information highway today is so quick. I mean, we can get information to Australia like that, put up a video and people can watch it. They didn't have that 100 and 200 years ago. So, like, the Lone Star as we know it today only got named that because it got to Texas. Otherwise, before it made it to Texas, it was known as the Bethlehem Star. But there's the name that stuck, not, you know, the Bethlehem Star. When I say that, most people don't know that that's the same design. No, because I think the <clears throat> Bethlehem, I think of a Bethlehem Star block, which looks a lot like the swoon quilt design right. from Camille Ross Kelly. But that's a different, yeah, I mean... We would name things regionally in a group of quilters or in a regional area that were all quilting together, and then they would pass around their patterns and stuff. It wasn't until we started, you know, printing patterns in newspapers and magazines that it got shared outside of a regional area. And we would come up with similar designs, and they would just be named according to that region. I think the churn dash block, which mm -hmm. is um, a rail block on four sides and then half square triangles in the corners, in the corners, and then a center. Um, square, so it's a nine patch block essentially. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's got like fifteen names historically of just different things that people called it only because 
they lived in different parts of the country and they came up with their own. So I think we should name blocks whatever we want because that's what we've been doing. I like your Sharknado quilt. Me too. It's cool. And you're reflecting I... our culture, which is what quilters were doing 100 years ago. They just had a war. We just have way cool television and cult classics like Sharknado and Jaws. See, I think it's cool. Oh, my God. I knew yes. she was going to bring this out. <laughs> it's been sitting here in my lap. <laughs> this whole episode. Is that right? <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> so have you seen an epidemic of terrific, vivid, unlimited DMG quilts? Let us know. Leave a comment on our blog or the YouTube episode. And that's all we have for today's episode. Look, they can't all be gems, Lynn. They just can't. And that's why today's show is made possible by QT Fabrics, who is a gem. Learn more about them and their fun fabrics at qtfabrics.com. We'd like to thank 77 Peaches Big Think Productions for helping the stitch because we need all the help we can get. If you enjoyed our show, please like, share, and subscribe. The next virtual stitch-in is Friday, May 11th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern, broadcast live on our YouTube channel. Our next book club episode, also our first, is April 27th. And again, on May 25th, my podcast, Hip to Be a Square, is out Fridays on iTunes or Google Play. All those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com. Tune in next time for more quilting chat with friends. <laughs>